Hey friends, I'm Leah Noel. Thanks for um, tuning in today to my floss tube channel. I um, talk about cross stitch. And um, first off, thanks for um, all the love on my new wooden glasses. I think they're really cool. Um, I'm in my regular spot again um, today. I know a lot of you said you you really like the new spot, um, but yeah, I'm just, this was easier today uh, to just be in my regular spot. So um, anyways, today should be um, pretty brief because I haven't been working on a whole lot. Um, this week, today, well today specifically today is my son's last day of preschool and it's so sad he's been he's been at um that current facility for two and a half years and um they stay in the same classroom and um it's it's for ages three to five um or three to kindergarten and so, you know, they, they get really close to the teachers and the, um, the faculty and it's a wonderful place. Um, and we're just, we're so happy that he had such a good um, experience there. Um, but, we're, and we're really sad to go. You know, like we're, we're really sad to leave. But he is starting kindergarten. Uh, not next week, but the, the week after. So we were giving him a, a full week at home to just kind of take a breather from, from school, um, transition a little bit more slowly into a big change, um, instead of just pulling him out of what he knows and then throwing him back into something, or yeah, throwing him into something fresh and new and, you know, overwhelming. So, so anyway, um, he'll be home with me um, every day next week and I have some crafts um, in mind for for that time just to help us to keep our minds busy and our hands busy uh, yeah so one of those one of those uh, projects is actually a cross stitch project and I'm hoping to teach him how to actually cross X's um, up until now He's been, he sometimes asks to stitch with me in the evenings, and um, I have some, <clears throat> he's stitched on 14 count Ada and 11 count Ada. And the 11 count is much easier uh, to get the needle through because um, I give him a, a yarn needle. It's really thick. Uh, it's, it's a metal, it's a metal needle, but it's just, it's really big. I mean, it's like, it's really big and it's dull. Um, so it's hard to get through fabric. It's, it's hard to get through the 14 count Ada holes. But anyways, um, I have, I have some plans to teach him to actually cross his X's. Um, otherwise he's just kind of making whatever shapes he wants or just lines or colors, you know, just willy nilly. More of, more of an embroidery kind of a situation, but Anyways, that's what's on my list for this upcoming week. And um, I will be stitching, um, hopefully I'll be stitching mostly on his stocking um, and on one of these other pieces that I'll show you today. Um, so I have two finishes to show you. One of them I just finished, and the other one I finished last year, but I just framed it. Um, that's the other thing I was going to say is this last week, instead of stitching, I've been working on framing um, and fully finishing these projects that have just been waiting to be framed. So I, I finally have some of the more important ones, important as in like, one of them's like overdue um, to be framed. But anyways, that's a different story. Um, I framed gifts for Otto's, uh, 
preschool teachers. And one of his teachers actually left the school last fall and I thankfully had her gift stitched in time. So I just had to quick frame it and I gifted it to her last fall. Um, I put photos of, um, of both of these framed gifts on Instagram. Uh, so if you follow me there, um, you will see those, those pictures on my Instagram account. Um, my technology situation is still not improved, um, although I did get a, a new recording device. Um, but I couldn't fix the microphone issue and I also cannot edit my videos at this time. Um, I do plan to work towards being able to do that again. Um, and, you know, inserting photos and, and video clips and that kind of thing. Um, so, I managed to frame the second teacher's uh, gift to give to her today and she seemed to really appreciate it and um, it was really nice. So anyway, that's done. Um, I also framed two other things, both of them gifts, um, both of them overdue and I will show you one of them today. The other one is kind of the secret um, but I'll show you, I'll show you when the person receives um, their gift. I, I have already filmed a little video showing you that finish. Um, but, um, okay, so let's show you stitching. Um, okay, so I finished this this week. This is Woodland Cottage by Elizabeth's Designs. And um, I started this at the very beginning of my summer break with my friend Christina. Um, she is uh, she is Petals and Pins on Instagram and um, also Quilting with Nico um, on Instagram and Etsy. She makes project bags and stuff. Um, anyway, she is one of my friends that I stitch with. Um, and we made a stitching date uh, for the end of my spring semester to start this together. And this, she didn't know this, but she she bought this and she sent me a little message. She's like, look what I bought just randomly. And, and I was like, oh, I have wanted to stitch that for literally years. So let's stitch together. And so uh, that's how that was, that's how that came about. Um, so I stitched this with her, um, she is still in progress on hers and that's okay. Um, it's not, it's not normal that I just whip through these projects, um, in such a timely manner, but <laughs> I don't know, this one just really, um, this one just really struck my fancy and um it's it's kind of special to me because i it reminds me of the the home we used to live in uh when we lived in california briefly and um so like this style of house is really common there we didn't our house did not look like this but it just reminds me of that area um and it's kind of mountainous um in between the the ocean, well, in, oh, no, I mean, like just off the ocean, there's like some some kind of mountainous kind of areas. And anyway, um, anyway, I modified the design so that these bushes were not rose bushes, but they look more like sage bushes, which um, which are. Um, just wild growing uh, in the in the area of California where we lived and um, so I just made instead of um, red French knots I made them a lighter green French knot um, I also added a variegated green floss um, here in the hills to just make it look you know more more natural more dimensional um, I, let me get 
myself situated. Um, okay, I changed the acorns, the colors of the acorns. Um, the The design has the tops to be white and the the body of the acorn to be a dark brown, and um, I just kind of made mine more uh, natural looking, uh, where they're lighter, a lighter brown on the bottom and a dark brown cap. Um, it is a night scene technically because you see there's this little um, moon charm and um, these beads represent stars, so it is supposed to be kind of a night scene. But um, I think it, you know, I think it still is okay that that I changed the colors on the acorns. Um, okay, I also changed the beads at the bottom here. Um, they are charted for, um, the picture here makes them look blue, like an iridescent blue. Um, and I, I did actually buy these beads. Uh, they are, they're a really pretty kind of a metallic color, um, where they're, they're like purple, blue, and green shiny, but they're dark. Uh, and they're, they have a matte finish. And I like the matte finish part, but um, I had these beads in, in my stash. They're like a purple, they're a, um, kind of a magenta, um, and they're kind of sparkly, but I got them from my friend Anne, Fibers Floss and Fiction, and I thought they would make a nice addition because the grapes up here are purple, and I changed these uh, these flowers to be like a light purple, magenta kind of purple. So then these beads kind of go in that color family. And they also remind me of, um, they remind me of ice plant in bloom. And um, ice plant grows just wild in California. These pumpkins, I tried to make these pumpkins into watermelons. Um, I tried at least four different colorways, like at least four different uh, flosses. Once I actually tried to do a stripe effect with two different flosses, um, it just nothing, nothing looked good, nothing looked very natural. And so I thought, you know, I think these just want to remain pumpkins. So I just kept them as pumpkins. Um, and the last thing, the last thing that I changed is I added this monarch butterfly. Okay, so this monarch butterfly, um, it's it's not it's not called for or anything, um, and I I knew I wanted to put a monarch butterfly on here because um, they migrate through the place where we lived in California, um, and I had this this button. It's a um, not Mill Hill. It's um, Jab Jabco. Is that what's called Jabco button? Um, I think that's what's called. Anyways, it's really, it's really big. It's really big and it's really thick. Um, if you can see kind of this with this angle, you can see how much it's raised off of the fabric. Like it's really thick. And I wasn't sure. I was just gonna, I was just gonna take it off. But I sent a. I sent a text to Christina kind of laughing about it and she's like, actually, I kind of like it. I was like, hmm. So I, I texted my husband with a picture of it and asked him what he thought. And he was like, I like it, you should keep it. Because uh, he thinks it's, it's like, it fits, but it's kind of like funny. It's kind of whimsical and he doesn't like things to be too serious. So, um, so I'm keeping it because um, consensus. Anyways, I loved this one. I just, it just really f just flew through it. I just loved it so much. There's so many specialty stitches in there. Um, lots of long stitching, back stitching. There's Smyrna crosses in these grapes. Um, it's a really, really dark purple, so it's hard to see the definition of those Smyrna crosses. Um, so I guess, um, I don't know. I guess I might have... If I, if I were to stitch this again, I might lighten the purple a little bit on those grapes, but it's, it's okay because that's actually my favorite color purple. 
really really dark purple uh oh i did change the window the window uh, floss to roasted marshmallow um i had purchased some roasted marshmallow for rosewood manor um for the snow but it's just so yellow um, that i couldn't use it for the snow but when i was looking at this design i thought oh that would make a good glowing window color so that's roasted marshmallow anyway i love this one i love it so much um so um christina and i once once she finishes hers um her woodland cottage we also have a second um cottage waiting in the wings to to stitch together um it's the lighthouse design so that'll be fun um whenever we get to that and there's absolutely no rush because i'm trying to work my whips down that's been kind of my theme uh this summer is just trying to work those whips and to get them done and um to get my whip list shorter that is my goal okay the second finish i'll show you is crone's crows corn and cats and i've shown this to you before it's by chart makers i've shown that to you before um i am stitching this um for a friend she um she is at the university um she is one of my instructors, but she's also become a good friend of mine. And um, when I saw this, when I saw this um, pattern, I knew I had to stitch it for her. And I love how it came out. Um, it is, uh, well, so it's got these funny, these two funny little cats um, and, you know, crows and pumpkins um, and an alphabet. So I thought, you know, there's a lot of elements in here that are really, I think, appropriate for, for this friend of mine. And I think she's going to like it a lot. And I can't wait to see her. I, I finished this in, um, I finished this last year. And since we, you know, were just off of campus all of last year, basically all of last year, I haven't seen her in like a year. It's really sad. But as soon as I see her, I'm going to give this to her. And I just framed this up yesterday. It's a, um, it, I need a five by five frame and it is so hard to find a five by five frame. How, how I came across this one is by looking at the four by four frames um, and it came with a mat. So this is a five by five frame that has a mat um, that will bring the, the window down to four by four. So I just got rid of the mat and um, stuck this in there. And it's, um, it's just a regular picture back. And I just wrote, you know, I just wrote a little message to my friend with a silver Sharpie. And, um, and that's it. it. The glass wouldn't fit, but that's okay. She won't mind. And I don't mind either. I like it that way. Just flosses for my stash. I just really like it, so. Uh, uh, I wish I didn't take so long in fully finishing things. Because um, I could I could actually like enjoy my own finishes before I give them away. Okay. So those are the finishes that I wanted to show you. And um, I don't have very many whips. Um, I have three whips to show you. One of them, I actually forgot to show in my last floss tube video. Um, I I think this just it, it was um, kind of sitting off to the side, and um, and the chart like fell down underneath some of my other things. So like I don't know, I just it just didn't um, come up. So I'll show you now. Um, but I didn't work on this this week. I worked on it two weeks ago. This is called Fleece Navidad by Blackbird Designs. Um, this is um, this is a project that I picked up over the winter and um, just really have been very much enjoying stitching on this. And 
um, like many of you, when you heard the, um, the shocking news and the sad news that Barb had passed away on July 4th, um, I went looking for any of my Blackbird whips and um, I think this is maybe my only Blackbird on the go right now. I do have some kind of um, waiting in the wings. But anyways, um, I am stitching this on, oh, I think this is Oaken. This is 32 count Oaken and it's supposed to be stitched on 36 count with one strand. Um, on some other linen, not, not Oaken. Um, and so because, so this is where I'm at, um, because it, it's not the same stitch count, um, the specialty stitches are not quite as full as they look on the, on the picture, but, um, I just decided to use, um, really struggling with this, um, this backing thing. Um, I just decided to use uh, two strands and to like, I don't know, make extra stitches if that helped to make things more look more full. I don't know. Anyway, um, so I brought this out to work on it and I noticed that I made a huge error and I think I'm going to be able to fix it, but it's just going to take a little bit of finagling. But um, the last time you saw this, do you remember how I told you I thought that all of these bulbs were supposed to be, um, like, round, like a circle? But actually, they're supposed to be kind of flat. So look at the difference between the ones on the bottom and um, this one on the side. So it's just one row shorter here on the side. And that's how all of these are supposed to be. And I did... I did... I did realize that early on in stitching this, but what I failed to to um, understand is that my counting from this this bulb to this bottom um, border here should have been one stitch one stitch closer instead of what it's charted for. So um, if you're following me up to this point this entire midsection here is off by one stitch up this way. Um, and it's hopefully not going to be too much of an issue, but I decided to put this border exactly where it's charted to be, which means that this is going to touch this border, which is so annoying. Am I right? <sighs> I'm, I'm annoyed with myself, definitely, but I'm not going to un undo all of this stuff. And normally I just try to, you know, brush it off and say, whatever, just deal with it. But oh, it just bothers me for some reason. Anyway, I'm, I'm really liking how it's turning out though. Um, I really, I'm still kind of on the fence about this, this color. It's a light khaki. Um, but the parchment that this design calls for would have just blended right into the fabric. This one does kind of blend into the fabric, but I didn't want to use a stark white either, so I don't know. It's good. I also looked at oatmeal, um, Gentle Arts oatmeal, um, but it's the same issue. It's just going to blend right in to the fabric, so um, I'm just going to keep it and just keep going on. But I, I do really like this design, and I, I like to stitch it now and then. Um, and I really enjoyed stitching it this, this winter. There's something about Blackbird designs um, that's just so easy to stitch. They're, they're easy. Um, I'm not even minding the border very much. And I think it's because they're, they're manageable. Like the design, the motifs themselves are, they're manageable. They're like, I don't know. The leaves are like three three stitch rows, if that makes any sense. I, I don't know. Okay, so what did I stitch on? What did I actually stitch on this week? I 
finished as much as I can finish this, I finished it. So I'm calling this a finish finish, but it's not finish finish because I don't know how to finish it. Um, this is this is Welcome Christmas by the Drawn Thread. You know what? Welcome Christmas. Welcome Christmas, the Drawn Thread. All that I have left are these red buttons on the star and the star above the tree. And that's kind of where I'm having an issue because I don't know where to find those buttons. I went to Hobby Lobby. They don't have buttons that small. So this is how it is. And um, so I beaded. You saw the, all the stitched work, but this is, this is the beads now. And it turned out really well. Actually, I did stitch a little bit in the house. Um, I accidentally made those windows black uh, and I had told myself to make them blue because I don't like black windows. I feel like it makes the house look deserted and empty and lifeless. So um, instead of taking out my stitching, I just did a half stitch of blue over the, over the top of the windows. And I think that it turned out pretty well. Okay, so um, if you know where I can get these beads, um, actually buttons, they're, they're buttons. The, the design doesn't give me a brand. It just says four millimeter red buttons. And I, I stitched, so it's, uh, this is supposed to be stitched on 28 count. I stitched on 32 count. So I think they might even need to be smaller than four millimeters, maybe three. Three and a half, is that a thing? I don't even know. Um, where do you like to get your buttons and how can you tell um, how, how uh, large they are? Because the ones at Hobby Lobby were not labeled with a size. And also the, the star, it just says six, it just says six millimeter, um, mother of pearl star no brand or anything so i don't know what to do about that if you have any suggestions i would really appreciate um whatever knowledge you might be able to share um because i really want to have that just done i'm trying to get things done and off my whip list so i'm calling that a done for now because i don't know how to finish i don't know how to carry on um okay i have also worked on something um actually i can tell you what i worked on i worked on um free and brave by the drawn thread and that is something that i'm stitching for a friend who probably does not watch my floss tube but this friend is unpredictable and I just can't be sure so I will show that to you once it's finished but for now you know this friend will not know what that means um, if I just tell you that I stitched on free and brave by the drone thread but I know a lot of you will know what that is um, and uh, the last thing I can show you is Virgil Virgil L. Pierce. Um, I am stitching this to commemorate my son going to kindergarten. This reminds me of his, uh, his new school. And it was stitched by a little boy. That's the original right down there. So it's stitched by a boy and, um, and I, I just think it's so cute. I just think it's really cute. I think this was a uh, market release last year, 2020. I believe. Anyway, it only uses three, um, three DMCs, and I'm I'm using the called for. Um, but I changed the fabric to be um, time. This is a uh, twenty twenty. No, thirty-two. I don't know if it's twenty-eight or thirty-two. I think it's either twenty-eight or thirty-two count time linen by Witchelt. So this is as far as I am and my plan for this one is to um, turn it into a photo album cover and 
I am probably going to put my son's name up here instead of Virgil because I want my son to to like this and I, I don't know you know I, I don't know that he will appreciate um, the uh, the original reproduction as much you know what I mean like even down the line anyway I think I'm just gonna put his name up there I'm just gonna chart my son's name put it up there but this is a lot of fill in on that building. It's a um, it's a school, and then um, I've got two more trees, and I've got a um, a basketball hoop to put out here on the side, and then it should be done. Really, I mean, this should not take me very long, in theory, but I am working on other things. So. Um, that's all I've stitched on this week. Um, I did receive um, some some mail. I went on eBay and um, I was I don't remember what I was looking on eBay for, but I saw I saw a chart that I liked and I added it to my watch list. It's like an older chart. Um, it's still available, but um, anyway, it's it's older. And I I put it on my watch list and I got an offer for a discount. Uh, from the seller and so I went to the seller's um, full store and just to look around and see like if I wanted to buy more than just the one chart and um, this was not a cross stitch store this was just like um, just a regular seller who happened to have some cross stitch items and I came across this box of flosses and it was marked as um, 100, 100 un, unlabeled or unmarked flosses or something like that. Um, but they had a close-up picture of, of the flosses and um, there are some really nice flosses in here. There are some, um, there's some Karen Water Lilies. I believe this is Karen, no, this is Gloriana um, Mississippi Mud. It's a silk floss. Um, there are some Weeks Dye Works. It's a lot of Weeks Dye Works. Oh, there's a Belle Soie, um, Belle Soie Noir. Um, cinders, oh, I have, yep, Cinders. Um, silk, yeah, this is a, no, oh, sorry, no, that's the cotton. Um, there's other, but there's other, like, there's Gloriana, um, Rosewood, Cranberry, um, there's some Gentle Arts in here, there's Weeks Dye Works, um, but mostly it's Gentle Arts. And so I saw, you know, I saw this, um, I saw this box, this rainbow of colors, and it worked out to be, I don't know, maybe 30 cents a, a, a bobbin, and I was like, oh that's this is a a treasure like this is a great find um i'm not i'm not really one to go into thrift stores because um i have a hard time sifting through through things um so this is a rare this is a rare occurrence for me to to be able to find uh such an amazing deal on on this thing um just clearly the the seller was not a stitcher and um even so, I, I imagine this, you know, this probably came from an estate sale or something, or um, possibly it's in, it's a stitcher who is getting rid of their collection for any number of reasons, you know, not, not stitching anymore. That could be any, could be any number of reasons, but I just, you know, I appreciate this so much. I, I just, I will use this and um, I'm just going to keep the stitchers bobbins um the way they're labeled and I will know that it came from this box and I will just you know I'll appreciate it and treasure it and I think that's as much as any of us stitchers can can hope for right when we when we finally move away from our hobby um so anyway I wanted to share that because you just never know what you can find on eBay and 
and um, yeah, and maybe I, I also think that like whenever I see people who find um, who find cross stitch items like actual stitch pieces or like supplies that kind of thing and they're so happy about it it kind of gives me it comforts me a little bit like to know that I am participating in a an activity that is so beloved to to us you know on a level that we can appreciate other people's like we can appreciate each other's hard work and our collections and we know how much our collections mean to us and so when we inherit those collections or you know purchase them whatever we appreciate it and it's it's just nice to know that that that's that our, our cross stitch stuff is going to have a life beyond us you know that's kind of that's kind of what it makes me think of and and feel so so anyways um thanks for hanging out with me today and um if you enjoyed this visit i encourage you to subscribe to my channel and um i am kind of an irregular poster so um if you click the bell icon, that will be probably your best indication of when I post my next videos. Um, but, um, oh, you know what? I do have one last thing to share. Um, so I was beading um, and I wanted to share this, this product. It's called Silamide. This is like, um, it's a nylon it's a waxed nylon. It's two ply waxed nylon thread and it's specifically for beading. And I, um, this was recommended to me by my friend Anne, um, uh, the same Anne Fiber Floss and Fiction who gave me those beads. Um, she, she recommended this product to me and I think it comes, I think I got these from, oh yeah, here it is, Fire, firemountaingems.com. And this is the best beading product. Um, don't use cotton if you can if you can avoid it because beads uh, the the beads can cut cotton really easily. Um, it's probably not a huge deal for stitched pieces that you frame and you never handle. Like that's probably okay. But if you have like a, a pillow or something, or if you're doing any kind of other beading. You want something substantial where your beads are not going to cut your floss. And um, this is really, um, really a pleasure to work with. And it comes in multiple colors. These are just two that are um, convenient. One's a light gray and one's a dark gray. And um, I, f I find that this is the most useful color. This is a light gray and it is called light gray. Um, comes in 40 yards and yeah I don't know it's just it's a great product so I really wanted to say something about it um so that if you are into beading projects you can um get some for yourself and now that really is it so I hope you enjoyed this visit I enjoyed visiting with you and um I'll see you next time take care